radar about 175 miles off the coast of Egypt. ABC's David Curley this evening on the signal sent minutes before that jet went down. This jetliner apparently sent data before disappearing, suggesting there was smoke and possibly fire in the all-important equipment compartment. The Airbus A320 had a data transmission system known as ACARS, which sent signals of smoke in the lavatory and avionic smoke, which would be the equipment bay below the forward lavatory, a bay that contains the jet's electronics, which control the entire aircraft. This is a major clue as to what happened. This is a major clue. I would personally say at this point, I'm going to come off the bomb theory and I'm going to say that this was a mechanical failure caused by a fire. The messages obtained by the website Aviation Herald and not confirmed by ABC were over a three minute period before all the data stopped. That's when the jet plunged into the sea near the end of a four hour flight from Paris at 2.30 a.m. The pilots had checked in with air traffic control saying all was fine, but 16 minutes later, at 37,000 feet, disaster. Greek radar reporting that the jet lurched sharply left 90 degrees before spinning back 360 degrees to the right, disappearing without a distress call. Tonight we've learned that Flight 804 was piloted by Captain Mohammed Shukair, his co-pilot Mohammed Awesom, both with extensive experience and nothing in their public records that is suspicious. And David Curley joined us tonight. And David, we heard Colonel Ganyard there say he thinks fire is now the leading theory on what went wrong. But there are many who are going to ask, could it have been a bomb or explosive device that started that fire? Absolutely. An incendiary device in that area could have started this. And really, the black boxes will give us the answer to that, David. As far as the data that came from that aircraft, Airbus, the airplane manufacturer, and Egyptian investigators say they will not comment on that data. David Curley with us again tonight. David, thanks. In the meantime, the hunt is on, as he mentioned, for those crucial black boxes. Our Matt Gutman is right there tonight on the Mediterranean, where they have already made some gruesome discoveries. Tonight, the international armada of ships and planes taking in that grisly haul. Egyptian officials saying seats, luggage, and human remains were spotted floating in the Mediterranean. U.S. planes joining in the search. Tonight, more possible debris spotted in flyovers. Earlier, we boarded a charter plane to scout the same seas search teams were scouring. Spotting debris out of the water is one thing, but actually finding pieces of the fuselage could be much more difficult because this part of the Mediterranean can be 10,000 feet deep. The real prize for search teams deep beneath the surface. The black box is emitting pings for only 28 more days. The race now on to find them. To get an accurate signal from those things, a search and rescue boat has to be virtually on top of the wreckage, not more than a couple of miles away. And tonight, so many unanswered questions for the families of the 66 souls on board. In Cairo, this man grieving for four relatives lost. Finding that small debris field, David, could help narrow significantly the search area and help investigators get to those critical black boxes more quickly. We're also learning that the U.S. is dispatching a second plane to help with the search. David, Matt Gutman, who was out on the Mediterranean today. Matt, thank you. The Egypt Air 